This is just my first attempt. There's very little editing to this video. It's just audio, but I will be making more, and yeah. Oh my god, guys, I finally did it. I finally made Diamond 5. I'm gonna I'm gonna be all up in your face with this vo volume and audio, and uh, I'm gonna be hyper energetic because nobody's gonna want to listen to this shit if I'm... Uh, uh, so let's dive right into this. 10 Steps for Mad Ewo Game. If you want to get better at anything in life, you have to have an attitude of learning and improvement. Learn to accept your shortcomings and improve on past failures to make yourself better. The reason this is the first step is because if you cannot get past this, you will never be able to see what you're doing wrong, and then you can never change what you're doing wrong to get better. Now, if you cannot do something, that is called the wall. This is the second step that you have to accept. To explain the wall, I'll use my own story. For about four months at the start of season eight, I was stuck in goal five and I peaked platinum two last season. So I knew that I was not where I should be. And I could not get back to platinum two because the wall. At goal five, I can go to goal four, but I can't go to gold three because I haven't yet gone through gold four. And that's what the wall is. It's the thing that you cannot get past because you have not gotten past this step right before it. Ask anybody who's played with me, I'll play like a fucking bronze five or I'll play like a challenger. And it's really all about feel. I told my friend, he's like silver something. He doesn't care to get gold each season, but I know that he's a diamond level player, but he doesn't care enough to climb the elo. That's what you have to ask yourself. Do you care to play this goddamn game enough to get the elo? Does being top 1% of your country even matter to you at all? This is the third topic, player types. So I pretty much have come to find out there's three different types of players. There's the people who are trying to be positive. There's the people who are trying to be toxic and the people who don't interact at all. The people who do not interact at all are just as bad as the toxic players because they allow the toxicness. The idea of the person who is trying to be positive is they're trying to lift their group so that they have a better chance to win. It's in a positive direction, not in compliance or a negative one. League of Legends is basically 3D chess but consider every pawn and character having emotions and if their emotions are lower than happy or very excited then they will not do as good as they need to to win the game when you go to sites like opgg or mobify or some other garbage i don't use um you're looking to have the best percent chance to win the game with like item builds uh skill order and whatnot that's exactly what trying to raise your teammates emotional level is it's trying to have the better percent chance to win the game now we're on to step four this is your personal limits like your map awareness your ch champion mechanical prowess uh your game knowledge how well you can lift your teammates um so if you're not warding constantly or looking at your map constantly and you miss something then gg like you're not good enough that's pretty much how this game is. You make one mistake, higher elo, and it can ruin the whole game. Even if it's early, late, doesn't matter. One crucial mistake can throw the tempo. Is a tempo snowball-based game. If you're winning, you're winning. If you throw that lead, you're losing. Then they have a chance to come back. It's all about give and pull. Gold elo is high elo. Because the players understand the game. They understand the characters. The thing that keeps people here is complacency and thinking that oh it's fine i'm higher than the average player this is where attitude of learning can really help you and sticking on one champion like i did diana and just grinding it out until you you think oh i'm good enough now but i don't know if people even ever get there because you see so many mistakes when you play a main character you're like damn i could really improve on this still now, part of your personal limits, I don't really know what to call this, so I'm just going to call it like the Naruto effect or something. But if you've ever seen the Naruto, like Great Ninja War or whatever, he gives 
his chakra to like an army worth of people so he's protecting the whole army with his specific energy even though they have their own energy he is like generating enough energy to put onto them and to protect them you have to be able to do that or like if somebody on the enemy team can do that if he can make his teammates better just by being near them then you'll lose because they're better as a group now let's go into point five this is your teammates limits and also your enemies limits so think about the player type are they toxic are they compliant are they being like let's do this guys if they're like let's do this they want to win if they're compliant they're like uh we could win we can lose it doesn't really matter and if they're toxic they don't fucking care if they win or not so you don't want to help toxic players because they'll get you to kill yourself and then you're like wow i feel dumb for even trying to help them and the players who are like let's go guys we can do it you want to help them because you don't want them to lose the confidence so each game you're rolling the dice in saying there's toxic players and there's feeders in the system and i want them all to go to the enemy team you just have to mentally think that it, it'll actually happen it literally happens you have to fight through the toxic people that are on your side though you can't let them get to you you need to use that naruto effect give your energy to the players who are willing to like reflect it and help you to try to win the game and into the next step because i forgot the number i think it's six um you need to be efficient and smooth at the things you do so that it just glides together it's all about flow which we'll talk about you need to have comfortability and focus to be able to make the correct plays to have the items because you smoothly farmed and didn't die to like the level two gank or whatever you need to be able to like have the pieces in order to like when the play happens it's there that's your play it's all about being prepared having talent and preparation at the later ranks preparation is more important than talent because everybody is talented at that point. Now we're going to talk about the two last points together. It's going to be flow and game quality. So flow is like a mental state. I could talk about it in a little bit. But so game quality, you need to know like, is this player toxic in the queue already? Do I even want to play with him? Because if you play with him and you lose, then you're you're toxic then too. It's super annoying, but sometimes you just have to dodge the games. If I ever see Shaco on my team, I know we instant loss or I have to dodge. Or if the Shaco is on the enemy team, I know all I have to do is just not die for like five minutes and we win the game because he's worthless behind. He can't farm the jungle. He can't farm a lane. That's just how it is. Now, in the beginning of my training, I was watching videos on flow. I still am. But not as much because now I understand the basics to it. I just need to like work out my own personal kinks with it. But flow is basically like everything is moving perfectly seamless. It's all just magical feeling. And I have a playlist on my YouTube account called Learning Path. It has other videos that taught me how to use the flow state. And it's not just for video games. It can be applied to any part of your life for extremely fast learning and improvement. My experience with it is struggle release flow recovery those are the four steps so first you need to have a struggle there has to be a problem in front of you you have to truly not be able to get past it then you need to release and say it's all right it's fine you have to mentally just forget about it and let it like just drift away so like i have my diamond five promos in front of me for the third time i have to just go away and not think about it like even though you want to think about it other things will tell you you just need to mentally manifest what you want but some part of us when we just only think of it will push it away and like we're just thinking about it and we're like that's the thing that's far away from us you need to come from a place that's very stoic that i already am what i need so in my core i know i'm a diamond player at least but I hadn't made it happen yet but i had to to prove to myself and that's what i did so the struggle the struggle was not being able to just get diamond to be like ha i am diamond now let's go masters because there has to be struggle so that you can like have the accomplishment like i really just did this i made diamond five 
for the first time, I never have to do that again. I never have to do it for the first time ever again. And so when you're releasing, it generally is like you're doing something that's completely different than what you actually want to do, but you're like letting it go. It's kind of like if you love something, you let it go, and if it's meant to be, it'll come back, and that's kind of how this works. So move through struggle, release, then you got flow. The flow state is basically like, it's like God mode. It's the avatar mode. You really do feel like you can do anything that nothing can stop you. You can mentally handle everything. It's, it's really amazing. So when it comes with like dodging games, you are trying to avoid dropping the flow because if you play a 20 minute game after like let's say you played two hours and you played a 20 minute game that was really toxic if you flow for the full two hours and you hit that 20 minutes that all that flow is gone you're gonna have to spend like an hour or something to regenerate like the necessary body elements to like make it happen it's it's hard to explain if you watch the videos on my learning path uh, playlist you'll understand this better but the fourth step is recovery and with recovery you're coming down from being like avatar god mode to just being like wow i'm making a bunch of mistakes you might still be winning you you might be losing but it all just loops back into struggle the recovery means you're not strong enough to just be at a hundred percent which eventually leads into struggle, which leads into release, and then back into flow. This is a cycle that is manipulatable, and if you take what I just said here and learn from it, you can also make anything you want happen in life. Because this is what I wanted to make happen in my life. I could have chose to have done this with anything else. But this is what I enjoy, and this is what makes me happy. If you're actually interested in self-improvement, go to my YouTube channel, Kyle Kendall. I have a playlist called Learning Path with more videos that explain the flow state further and better than I do. This is just an introduction to it. Please take this moment to elevate yourself. Nobody else or anything else in life makes me feel like, oh wow. I've really improved. I was never a good student in school and I didn't have like parents to teach me anything. So a majority of my life was just spent me doing whatever the fuck I want and people just being like, you're fucking stupid. Are you retarded? What is, why are you doing this? Like everything, everything in my life is like that. But with league, I can be like, wow, that was stupid of me. Why did I do that? But I can also do things that people who said I was stupid can't do. It's, it's very, like, assuring that I'm not just stupid, that I'm capable of being something in this world. Being something only a select few who have worked for it can be. Okay, I'm coming back randomly. I don't even remember how the last segment ended, so it's going to be just added in. But um, I remember an LCS player talking about how, like, off-rolled challengers will play, like, high golds or like platinum level um and so that kind of fits in with this there's a guy named mundo he's played since like season three he's played over a thousand games as dr mundo each season and he's only played dr mundo i played with a nidalee player a thousand games nidalee 50 percent they're they're all 50 percent win rates they play a thousand games as one champion to get diamond five and I did it in 300 with trolling and feeding and learning how to get diamond five for the first time. These players, they get diamond five with one champion, but it takes them a thousand games. They are not actually diamond level because when you get to that level, all you need to do is flip the coin enough times and play even. If you go zero, 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 and you flip the coin 10 times and you won the coin flip six out of ten times that's basically what they're doing they're just flipping the coin hoping if they go even every single time they win they've become good enough at one champion to maintain a diamond five elo by coin flipping but that's not how you improve and that's not how you climb at the game 
I really hope you learned from this video and you could improve off of it, not just League of Legends, but also in your life because some of these things can be applied outwards. I know when I learned a lot of the stuff to help me climb in League of Legends, it was about watching like Dota 2 videos or Overwatch videos with similar, similar ladder mechanics or um, just watching videos about real life scenarios where people learned and they had a lesson to teach afterwards. So um, please stick around for my next amazing video that's going to be coming out with similar stuff like this and my Diana montage is coming out.